Uh, so, yeah, a very good morning to everyone and a very warm welcome to the launch of the Cultivating Collaboration Network, or C2 Network, as it is also known. Um, it's a new initiative from SUS, and you'll find it all about it and how you can be a part of it over the course of the next 40 to 45 minutes. And I hope you'll learn why we think it's important to collaboratively drive positive change. Uh, I am Alan Stevenson, Supply Chain Development Director at SUS. And I'm delighted to host the introductory webinar. Uh, the programme itself will kick off early in the new year. For those of you who are new to SUS or the Scottish Agricultural Organisation Society, uh, hence why we use SUS, we are Scotland's experts in co-ops and food industry supply chain collaboration. We've been around for 100 years and are quite a unique organisation. We're owned by our co-op members. We have 60 co-ops who have a combined turnover of around £1.5 billion uh, and we operate across all sectors of agriculture and the rural economy. Uh, some are also involved in food processing, in cheese and in, in seafood and also in um, uh, broccoli crisps. So together our mem members represent over 30% of all agricultural output. Um, and anywhere between 20 and 50% of share of market produced per sector. So it's, it's very significant. In fact, up to over 90% in terms of uh, Scottish mussels. Um, so as I say, it's a significant influential player in the agri-food and rural economy and distinctive in all that we do is for the collective good. Uh, as you will have gathered, cooperation and collaboration are very important to ACS and its members. It's, it's our light blood. Um, but we know there are so many opportunities and challenges ahead of us as we deal with things like climate change and we enter the fourth agricultural revolution. Uh, sometimes it feels a bit like the fourth dimension when I hear some of the descriptors. Um, this includes anticipated changes from new technologies, data, gene editing, sensors, the use of artificial intelligence to make smarter planning and operational decisions. It will also power autonomous drones and robots. Um, all sounds a bit mind boggling, which is why we need to take the opportunity to work more closely with others who are experts in these areas to really understand and help deliver genuine solutions. Equally, uh, that expertise needs to appreciate the practical issues that co-ops and farmers face in achieving long term sustainable and importantly workable goals. Um, there's a real opportunity to bring new thinking and knowledge from other disciplines, other worlds, if you like to address key challenges that our co-ops have identified as their priorities, priorities that really matter to them and to the, the future of sustainability of, of food production. Uh, as our strapline says, cultivating collaboration to drive change can only happen through building industry-wide partnerships. Uh, and as such, SUS is investing significant financial resources, literally thousands of pounds to help make this happen. Um, there's no public funding support, and it demonstrates our commitment to put something back into the sector and community to help with the sizable challenge of addressing sustainability, all the economic, environmental and social uh, drivers. Um, and we need innovation and technology to help us do that and the support of, of everyone else. Uh, our co-ops though are very much at the heart of this initiative, which provides a route to engage with them and their thousands of farmer members. Collectively, they are very much open to progress and new ways of working. So we hope you can join us on this journey and be part of something new, innovative and collaborative. It carries with it a, a real determination to combine expert skills and vast practical experience from the sector to explore and deliver pragmatic solutions for the benefit of a sustainable future for all. So that, that's the introduction. Uh, in terms of today's event, We'll shortly present a co-op perspective on the C2 network via video from our chairman, John Hutchison, uh, also a farmer and represents uh, several co-op boards, uh, followed by the views and the initiative from potential associate members representing technology and innovation providers, academia research uh, and co-ops. So that'll be another video. Then we'll have a short update from our own Helen Glass, who is managing the programme and will explain how the C2 network will operate over the next year. Finally, we'll have a short question and answer session with John, Helen and <coughs> excuse me, Tom Wilnoch, who also features in the main video and is co-founder and CEO of Iceni Earth, a technology innovation company. Uh, I'm sure you will have many questions, so please use the, the Q&A box uh, during the webinar and please, please start now uh, and don't leave it uh, to the end. Um, you can use the chat box for more general discussion uh, if you like, but it'd be helpful if you can direct them to the Q&A. 
and then we'll put as many questions as we can uh, to our panel at the final session. So we can hear from John now, that would be great. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce SOS's C2 Network initiative today. Collaboration is at the heart of everything that SOS does, driven by the belief that by working together, our fragmented rural industry can leverage benefits that are greater than the sum of its individual parts. In our fast changing dynamic world where market forces drive increased scale and efficiency, rural businesses in Scotland, and in particular, our family farms are being tested more than ever. By collaborating, we can meet these forces head on, increasing our power and influence in a way that is simply not possible alone. The C2 network aims to take this to the next level by encouraging discussion and thinking through a series of webinars and facilitated roundtable meetings, which will then be taken forward and developed into proposals and actions. The emphasis will be on finding deliverable solutions to problems with carbon reduction and data value realization identified as initial priorities. I would urge you to engage in this exciting initiative led by our excellent team at SAOS. That's great. Thanks, John. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, and I think the scale and impact of, of agri courts and our supply chains cannot be underestimated. And the access that that provides into, into a huge network um, within uh, the rural sector and, and beyond. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you'll be looking forward to answering some questions at the end from the audience. Uh, as such. Uh, so now we're going to move on to our second video and I think no, there's not really a better way to highlight how the C2 network will benefit all those who will be part of it than through the perspectives of three different types of organisation. So we have academia and research, we have technology and innovation and we have a, a view from one of our, our co-ops on how they're using uh, technology in, in this space. The vision of the Cultivating Collaboration Network is simple. It's to drive positive change through collaboration. SOS has developed the C2 network to harness the power of co-ops to drive that change through forming industry-wide collaborative partnerships. The C2 network will feature prioritised challenges that face our co-ops. And together with our affiliate members, we will bring new thinking to address these issues. Today we're going to hear from three types of organisations that are likely to feature in the C2 network. Safari Gateway are the Knowledge Exchange and Impact Hub of the Scottish Government funded Environment, Food and Agriculture Research Institutes and working with research partners in universities and industries we are delighted to also work in collaboration with SAOS and their farmer members to share cutting edge research, knowledge and evidence. By working together with innovators on the ground, such as SAOS, we can collectively rise to the many challenges we currently face in agriculture, such as periods of flooding, drought, biodiversity loss, labour and market uncertainty, and the challenge of decarbonisation. Hi, I'm Tom from Iceland Earth, and we're on a mission to help farmers understand biodiversity and carbon on their land. The C2 network will give us, as a young tech startup, the opportunity and access to thousands of users, co-ops and their members through the network to enable us to develop and iterate solutions as we move forward, particularly at scale. Part of the um, sort of excitement around working with the C2 network is the sort of um, ability in the future to look at new solutions in conjunction with existing uh, partners and in particular new partners. The themes chosen for Year 1 C2 network are meaningful to a wide range of agri co-ops, including ourselves, with climate change being very important to us. The access to knowledge, state-of-the-art technology and future fit approaches will help our members address numerous challenges. Greater collaboration and cooperation within the network, but also working with new partners is something we're really looking forward to. We can provide, through our network of scientists, a range of people with specialist expertise to assist in this initiative, 
to help in the sustained growth and development of rural businesses and welcome a true commitment and belief in the power of solving problems together for the people of Scotland and further afield. Over the years we've been very much involved at Gramping Growers in research and development um, along with very much the involvement with SOS looking at this what we see as a sort of unique platform to work with other cooperatives and like-minded businesses to improve the cooperation, to improve collaboration uh, and ultimately benefit our members. Having co-ops at the heart of the C2 network will be a unique way for us to prove to our investors that we're really connected to our end user and that means we have more of a chance to iterate and develop solutions that work for them and ultimately we'll learn from the extensive range of expertise within the network that will enable us to grow and develop together. This new SAOS initiative, the C2 network, will lead the agenda for change by bringing together a range of expertise and perspectives on current thinking to stimulate discussion, explore potential solutions and develop practical actions. So if you're an academic centre of excellence, a tech-based enterprise or an industry body, we look forward to welcoming you to the C2 Network. that video and it's given you a, a bit more insight into what the, the C2 network uh, will be about uh, and hope we'll get some questions coming in soon. Um, but anyway, hearing firsthand from Lorna, Tom, Mark and Claire there uh, will we'll no doubt uh, give you some uh, better view of what, what the, the network could be. Um, John highlighted how theme webinars and facilitated roundtable discussions will feature within the network and now Helen is going to give us a bit more in how this will operate in practice. Uh, so Helen, over to you. Thank you, Alan. Um, the ability of the C2 network to act as a catalyst to create new partnerships, both from within and out with the sector, lays a really strong foundation for bringing new thinking to the table and encouraging an exchange of ideas to drive change. The C2 network does this in a structured way. The network, as we heard on the video, um, has agri-coops at its heart, and its identity and vision resonates with the key messages that John conveyed that finding deliverable solutions to the varied challenges that face agriculture relies very much on collaboration. Our approach has identified co-op prioritised topics, and these will act as focal points for the network participants uh, to consider. In the first year of the network's operation, we're focusing on three key topics driven by the priority areas identified from across our co-op members. The first is decarbonisation strategies on farm, and the second is around data-delivered intelligence that can create value from farm into supply chains. Two topics that certainly resonate in future-proofing our agriculture sector, our co-ops and their farmer members. Each is very much receptive to inputs of technical expertise from entrepreneurial enterprises, as well as new thinking from across the research base. The topics also map onto the radar of innovation and business funding calls. And each topic also allows for a breadth of deliverable outcomes, which could be co-op specific or generic, or have generic benefits uh, across co-ops. So how will the C2 network process work? Each topic begins with an online event, bringing together, for example, agricultural based case studies, a state of the art insight into the topic, how other sectors may have tackled a similar challenge, and of course, framing the challenge from a co-op perspective. We plan to have a keynote speaker to set the scene and provide insight to initiate new thinking. 
The online event will only be available to our co-op members and those who join as associate members. During the weeks following each webinar, those organisations who want to continue the conversation around a virtual table with the co-ops can participate in SOS facilitated discussions to begin the process of exploring both co-innovation approaches and practical solutions around the theme. These conversations may explore interventions from short to medium to longer term initiatives. After that stage, there's the opportunity to formalise the route that is deemed most relevant, whether that be undertaking a feasibility study, developing a proposal for an impending call, filling a skills gap, or organising a learning journey. We won't be prescriptive about the outcomes, and this gives more flexibility um, across the range of associate members to contribute. Throughout this stage, we'll also be identifying what funding calls may be relevant for that chosen route. So to summarise, the process itself ensures that our associate members will have access to three webinars, each focusing on a very relevant topic, which will then stimulate uh, facilitated interactions and begin the opportunity to build partnerships, not just with the co-ops, but with others participating in the network. Key to our C2 network ambition is to build these trusted partnerships and enabling our associate members to benefit from the reach that SAOS offers into Scottish agriculture. I'll now hand back to Alan. That's great. Thank you, Helen. Uh, and we should remind everyone that geography is not a barrier to participate in the C2 network. I think we're all very much used to technology, um, Zoom, Teams, whatever, uh, to make it work, much as it's, it's very good to get together when we get the chance. Um, we also we don't underestimate the role of the intermediary organisations, the development organisations, the sector organisations, and, and how they can play and add into this landscape, um, perhaps as, as gateways bringing valuable contributions to a subject area or, or expertise uh, as such. Uh, I'm glad to see we have some questions coming through, so we'll be able to keep our panel busy, which is always good. Um, as Helen alluded to, um, becoming an associate member of SUS, you'll have access to the network. The, there is a fee, the annual fee is set at £300, and it's, this will help support really the facilitation of three online event, events and the ongoing annual um, participation within that, all the discussions that will take place over that period. As you can imagine, these are these are deep topics that we're looking at, um, and we'll be looking for the opportunity for everybody to, to join in and get the, the value from that. Uh, you'll also have access to participation in other SES member events and training, and it's wider knowledge sharing network. Uh, and as I say, our, our, our network extends far beyond rural as well into the food and drink industry. The fee will not cover the cost of running the programme, as you can imagine, but it is a demonstration of commitment um, and we believe you know, you'll get great value from it. And I have to say all our members, all our co-ops uh, have to pay a fee uh, towards the work of SUS. Um, so that's, that's uh, hopefully helpful for you to have that information. Um, as Helen mentioned, the workshop themes are, are very current and challenging for everyone and perhaps there's no better way to address them than in a collaborative fashion. Uh, they'll also be supported by input, as, as Helen mentioned, from external speakers who will give us um, their view and uh, stimulate that uh, discussion. So we're now going to move on to the, the question and answer session. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, John. Welcome, Helen. Uh, so let me kick off with the first question I have here. Uh, so what makes CQN different to any other innovation network that tech-based enterprises can join? Uh, maybe start with John there. Yes, well, this network is going to be unique in the rural sector and that there's no other organisation uh, that has the, the, the spread that SOS has. So by joining this network, you're going to get the benefits of the, 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 the reach uh, that SOS has, uh, and that goes right from primary production right through to food processing, and it really joins so many um, sectors together. And we've had a lot of experience in this area with a with a very experienced team. 
Yeah, th thanks, John. And, and Tom, could you maybe expand from your perspective, perhaps around the importance of co-innovation or, or what, what, how you see it? Yeah, I think it's a, it's, a really, it's a really good question, actually. And thanks, everyone, for inviting us to be here. Um, I think if the benefit here for kind of tech companies or tech enterprises is about enabling us to solve the pain points that are in the industry, right? If you're a good tech company, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to solve a problem or, or, or facilitate the solving of a challenge that end users actually have. And so with this kind of very outward looking collaborative approach, I think we can, we really see it as a benefit to be able to connect with end users, farmers and producers in this case, um, and it enables us to really get some hands-on insight. Ideally, we'd love to kind of put prototypes in front of everyone and get feedback on that so we can kind of continually iterate and improve what we do. The other side of that is kind of showing to people who, who enable us to scale, our investors, that we are really embedded in the industry and we really understand what needs to be, what needs to be developed. And so those are the kind of the two things that enable us to co-innovate together. And I think that's a real benefit of the, of the network. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Helen, have you got something to add to that? Yeah, it certainly would uh, echo what Tom has has said there. Um, from my perspective, what I um, what I found is the ability to build true consortia um, with uh, partnerships that have not just immediately been brought together, but have uh, have a track record of discussion because that really shines through. You know, from a an R&D proposal uh, perspective, that there's a true partnership actually um, embedded in, in, in that proposal. So I'd echo everything that Tom, Tom and John have said. Okay, thanks. I'm going to try and join up two questions here. Um, one about um, addressing the challenges, to what extent does C2 focus on supporting the generation of new ideas and the development of new opportunities? And maybe within that, it'd be quite good if we had some snippets of examples that you've come across to date that you think may be, may be useful uh, in terms of what this network could deliver. Because I think all those practical things are, are quite helpful. So if I can go back to John and that one, for starters, John, that would, that would be great. Yes, well, um, at the sort of grassroots production level, um, I, I would give the example of the machinering network, which is a very... Um, successful network of co-ops that cover the country where we, we match demanders with suppliers. And, and there's, a, there's a common a database, there's a common a, a management system that's been developed collaboratively. And you know, without that uh, joined up collaboration, we'd never be able to develop these systems. And, and that in itself, the machine learning system, which covers most primary rural businesses it is a fantastic springboard for other organizations to tap into and, and to, to join the sort of the, 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 the expertise that sits there mm -hmm. and the access to, to, to primary production businesses. But I wonder, Alan, if I might just quickly take, I noticed that, that Richard Playfair, if you don't mind, has put a yeah. question up on, on um, greenhouse gas emissions and, and wild deer and deer management. And one of the areas that SOS is involved in is, is quality assurance and delivery of quality assurance schemes. And again, this is on a collaborative basis that we, we are now in a position to uh, effectively uh, encourage a, a scheme to be formed and to, to deliver that in terms of auditing and, and to bolt on carbon uh, measurement to that. So we're well placed to look forward to the to the next, as you say, Alan, the, the, yeah. the fourth agricultural revolution. Yeah. And I, I just picked up Richard's question there and, and just an example of how we can we can help. Yeah, I think I think that's that's good, John. It shows that nothing stops at the C2 network. It, it, we we embrace it and we can extend it into the other areas of support uh, within SUS and, and external to SUS as well, which is great. Uh, Tom, have you got any thoughts, examples of of uh, how the network could uh, could operate, some something you've already already doing or heard of from other technical companies. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things where the, there's a lot of breadth and depth with connecting into this network, right? And for us, we can kind of take developments in our sector, the kind of tech sector, whether that's kind of looking at 
data standard so that data is not kind of passed to everybody uh, without any kind of transparency. It's kind of looking at what's, what other companies and other sectors have kind of done to form those data standards and those requirements and making that process transparent and then applying it to this sector, the agricultural sector, where it, we're kind of in a period of rapid change and challenge and, and how can we adapt those kind of techniques to the reality that we're facing here. And I think that that is the case for something like data standards, greenhouse gas accounting and inventories and that kind of thing and leading people through that journey. And I think that experience is kind of what it's kind of taking that from our background and saying, okay, how do we make this work for this, these end users and the guys involved in, in the, in the network as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you. Um, okay. This is, this is going to be one for Helen and uh, it's probably the, the obvious question and say, well, surely we've got all these networks out there. Um, so why would universities or research centers, farmers, why, why would they want to join this net, the C2 network, Helen? Uh, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, other networks do exist and they all, all have their value. And we go back to the fact that agri-coops are at the heart of our network, and that's absolutely unique. And there's so many ways in which um, we, we can reach out to uh, organisations um, throughout the, the UK, not just in terms of science and technical advances and, and new thinking, but in terms of uh, knowledge transfer and accelerated adoption by end users, thinking about practices that other people have developed uh, that we can bring into the, the C2 network. So I think that's very valuable. But if I just touch back onto the, the earlier question there about bringing in new ideas, because we believe that through the webinar, um, the speakers that we'll be able to attract, you know, bringing in new thinking, highlighting examples of what's going out there in terms of the, the range of innovation centres throughout the, the, the UK, uh, the, using the uh, ability of the KTNs to highlight to us what, what new thinking, new technologies are emerging. And of course, looking at you know, further afield in EU projects about new thinking and approaches as well and bringing that together. And, and I think that through our social media channels, we'll be populating that with what we see coming from from left field, as well as what's here in the here and now. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Al. And uh, perhaps I could add to that that uh, because of our co-op strength and, and the access to that very unique um, group of people um, and thousands of farmers, then it does make it quite attractive. We we believe. Um, I've got a question. I'll start with John here. Um, and because you can tell us maybe from your experience as a, as a farmer and a, and a, a co-op board member, John, but, you know, what have been the key barriers to adoption of practical solutions across the industry in relation to something like decarbonisation? You know, why, why isn't it happening or is it happening uh, just now? I think it's really just agreeing a, a common standard for these things and having a delivery mechanism for actually getting the work done on farm. Um, you know, so, so, so firstly, it, it's agreeing with industry and with customers what, what is a, a deliverable protocol um, and, and be, being able to actually do, make sure it's something that is deliverable and not something that's so, so difficult for us to do on farm. And also it's about beginning a journey and, and starting off and, and expecting to sort of build on that as we go forward. So I guess the barrier, Alan, is trying to do it all at once and, and, and having a mechanism for actually getting onto farm and, and doing carbon audits and agreeing a common platform for enabling this to be done. Sure, sure, no, that's great. And, and Tom, from your perspective, in terms of engaging with the sector, what, what's the kind of barriers you've had to uh, address, deal with? I think it's really, um, it's kind of passing through that gate, right? I think a lot of co-ops are, are gatekeepers to, to end users and farmers who essentially dictate what, what good technology looks like because they are the ones who adopt it, right? So I think that in, in, other, you know, in other circumstances that can, that can kind of be quite difficult. But I think that's the real value of this, you know? There's, there's, 
there's gates and a mechanism for us to kind of get to that point. And I think it's, it's that, that's it. I don't really have anything else to add, but it's that kind of like, you know, that process of flowing through it and getting to the end user yeah. is one of those, one of those barriers that we're looking forward to kind of being a part of this to, to try sure. and get, get We like the idea of being gatekeepers. Um, mm. That sounds good. Uh, Helen, I'm going to ask you this, but I'd also like you to, as well as comment on that, it'd be good if you could expand on the potential, as, as John and Tom have alluded to, how we can take forward the ideas, how perhaps they could be funded in future. Somebody's made a question about is there is there funding sources, EU leader, <clears throat> and is there other sources that we can look at? But I guess what is it that we take that uh, to those who, who would be interested in funding it, how, how do we uh, bring really good propositions to them from this, the, the C2 network? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll answer the, the just uh, add to the, the answers that have been given previously in terms of adoption. And I don't think we should ignore the fact about skill and uh, developing skills as we expect sectors of, and our farmers to adopt new technologies as well. And that's something, and bridging that gap in terms is really important as well. Um, in, in terms of funding, yes. Um, um, I, th I think there's a plethora of, of routes out there. The, the, they often come upon us um, with fairly tight deadlines. And I think by the C2 network actually engaging even further with the funding bodies and not just Innovate UK, but looking at what we can do through Scottish government um, and with also working closely with Scottish Enterprise and their different initiatives. It's about finding the right um, route for funding, depending on, on the nature of the collaboration that, that's involved. Um, and, and we should not ignore other ways in terms of building and taking forward ideas, not just to, you know, for anything from working with universities and research institutes and the types of funding mechanisms that they have, but also working with other sector bodies um, you know, in, in digital space technologies as well, and opening up access to the funding streams that they have as well. So it is a bit of an art, um, and, and here at the C2 Network, we'll be able to guide that process and do that work in the background to support our co-ops and our associate members. Okay, so in, in effect, we'll be bringing thoroughly researched and strong propositions uh, from the sector with the support of all those involved uh, to take forward. Yeah. Okay, and, and you, you did mention something about the, the sector support organisations, but we also have uh, trade bodies and, and, and other interested groups. How, how, and maybe you could answer this first, Helen, you know, what role do you see um, these organisations having within the C2 network? Yeah, no, they're, they're integral to it as well, particularly in terms of they can contribute to developing policy that may have to be part and parcel of the change that we're, we, we want to be to be looking at. And they're also looking at developing you know, the, the funding mechanisms, not just for the, the entrepreneurial companies like, like I see near Earth, but responding to demands for the agendas that is set out in, in programme for government as well. So I, th I think that having them on board and using their expertise mm. uh, these organisations is really important because that also brings scale across whether you're in the, the Highlands, the Central Belt or in the South of Scotland as well. Absolutely vital role they have and their wealth of expertise as well. Thank, thank you. And, and John, have you got uh, something to, to add to that? Um, well, I, I guess, I mean, I, I bring everything down to on-farm level and um, it's very difficult, I think, for an individual farmer to to really get access to some of this innovation. Um, and, and, and maybe I'll just give you a, 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 an idea of the power, I think, that that, that could be unleashed. We, we supply barley to a, a new startup um, whiskey operation, and they're just producing their first malt now. And, and there's some really exciting um, technology involved with labelling. A, a, a QR code that you can you can zap with your phone and it unleashes a whole story of the production system and the way that the whiskey is made. And it, it's just such a powerful tool that, that me as an individual couldn't really develop, but in conjunction with a customer and certainly collaboratively, we, we can do these sort of things. And, and we're talking about um, data 
adding value, well, it's a, it's a very good example of how this information that's, that's available because it's just the story of how we farm, the story of the process that's packaged up in a way that's delivered to the customer on the, on the bottle and adds value to that product. No, no, thank, thank you, John. Um, and I guess part of that story of another question has just come in, um, and it's about how we um, get some consensus and carbon audit detail. Uh, and, you know, will the network be able to be a, a kind of stimulator for some consistency of what international benchmarking standards Scotland and our farmers uh, will need? Um, and I'm going to ask Tom on that one. Uh, get your thoughts on that, Tommy, what, what's the, the potential to do that, to bring that, which is, it seems to be quite a demand from the sector all around. Yeah, I think it's really important. I think it's, it's about, you know, that voice of the practicalities, are, you know, as, as John was saying, on farm level, what are the challenges here? And how, does, how should that fit into a standardised process? There definitely needs to be one standardised framework of how we account for this kind of thing. Um, and we, you know, as I said in the earth, we're kind of a conduit for just, enabling that thing to be a little bit easier, right? So it's less kind of paperwork and less bureaucracy. And so data can hopefully flow between the people who need to see it. But yeah, I definitely think, I would hope that it's about putting that voice forward from the kind of field level, you know, that ground level voice of, okay, you're, the industry is asking for this, but here's, here's some of the challenges I've, we face on farms about actually practically doing that. Um, but it's ultimately about who and, how other organizations are willing to engage, right? Yeah. Because they have to be in, they, they need to take the step to be in the room with you guys through this network. You provided the mechanism, the door's open. They have to kind of go through it now to have, to hear that voice. And, you know, there's no better opportunity than now, basically. No, thanks. I mean, it sounds like we're already getting interest in that first workshop as people see, you know, how can we, how can we all come together and get some consistency or, or get the same ask of, of how, uh, we ask those that make decisions to uh, to take this forward, and then maybe finally, Helen, have you got a, a comment on on that and how the uh, how the workshops can can perhaps uh, facilitate that that process? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's a really good question, and because it, it's really interesting that you know we're, we're our view is the, the the roundtable discussions that happen after the webinar is is the place where you know the, the the thinking of all the participants can you know be brought together in one place and that's where there's no one outcome from these discussions you know, if it's about you know a landscape aspect of well what, what, what options have we got out there and bring that together so that we understand what the variables are and um, or it you know it could be an r d type call or it could be about well we actually have to change uh, a policy element or have come to some sort of agreement um, and i think that's where the benefit of these facilitated um, workshops that happen after the webinar can really take place and be used as a sounding board but be open as to what direction what, what, what do we need to now do to make the change that is required? And I, already I'm, I'm seeing a sort of plethora of ideas coming through on that. That's, a, that, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm going to close the Q&A session now and thank John, Tom and Helen for all their input and putting them through that. But uh, hopefully that's been helpful and enjoyable for everybody. Um, and perhaps just to close the webinar, uh, you know, we do hope you find the proposition compelling to join us in the C2 network. Uh, whether you're an industry body, a public body, a research-based organisation or you know, a technology company where, you know, it's, it's open and welcome to all. Um, and it's an opportunity to, to engage with a massive and vital sector uh, and to build partnerships and trust that perhaps uh, we haven't had... We, quite the opportunity this this is very much an open uh, an open invite and hope, hopefully it will drive towards a sustainable future uh, we suspect it will develop new new initiatives beyond the senior c2 network and it will be driven by practical needs um, full details are available um, and you'll get them either on the closing slide or they'll be emailed to you you'll also be able to see a, a recording if you so wish to do the so again um, of, of this whole webinar. If there's something you missed or you want to share with somebody else, 
Um, I should say thanks again to all the contributors, not only to John Helen and, and Tom, but to Lorna, Mark and Claire, uh, and also to you, the audience, for, for bearing with us while we go through this exciting new proposition. Um, I have to say a special thanks, though, to the team, to Helen, Rona, Patty and Alison, uh, who helped develop the concept and get this webinar together, and to Scott and Adam, who are in the background uh, from SBN for all their the technical support. There's nothing more uh, comforting than knowing that some, somebody else is looking after the technical side of this, um, as I've mentioned, my fourth dimension um, worries these days. So uh, anyway, we, we finally, we do look forward to you joining the C2 network. Uh, and working together for a better future. If you do need to find it anymore, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to discuss that. Uh, so thank you everybody and I hope you have a really good Friday. Thanks, Alan. Thanks. Thanks. Well